We're also charged with talking about regulation. So from the point of view of somebody who sells data, what are, what are the hoops and concerns and the, and the red flags that you have to pay attention to when figuring out how to take a product to market? Yeah, the, the regulatory question is tricky because it's not a matter of being compliant today. It's a matter of thinking about where the regulatory environment is going to be 10 years from now, and it's changing very quickly. Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest focus uh, that we've seen from regulators and, and what we continue to think is, is going to be a big focus moving forward is uh, personal data. And I'm not just talking about the PII, but also the anonymized content. Uh, that's, that's probably going to see more regulation. We're very mindful about those anonymized records and, and uh, the likelihood of re-identification. So we've built processes in-house to uh, assess how likely uh, and how impactful uh, that re-identification might be. Where possible, we aggregate records, which makes re-identification more difficult. Um, another big uh, point with compliance is making sure that you're collecting content in a way that's consistent with terms and conditions. And uh, for that, we've, we've got a team that sources that internally. And we do all that due diligence on our end of the fence so that uh, when the folks that are trading the assets, uh, get the data in hand. They don't need to go through that risk assessment again. We've done a lot of that for them. Okay. Um, Tony, from, from, a, from the buy side perspective, what, what, do you, what are the red flags for you from a regulatory perspective? But also, what, is, what are you looking for in a data set that, that really gets you excited? Well, I mean, you're looking for unique insights that you can't get without that data set. So, you know whether on the quant side or, or, or the discretionary side, you know, my philosophy has always been start with the most important questions to answer, where if I could answer this question, I think, you know, we might be able to profit from that. And by the way, I think that's a generalizable way to think about things. You don't just have to be an investor. Um, you know, regulatory risk is a real thing, you know, not just with alternative data, but, um, you know, other data as well. Um, you know, every shop I've worked at has taken an extremely conservative approach to, you know, everything regulatory. Um, I do think, you know, from just a marketing perspective, um, you know, you look at firms like ad tech uh, who leverage a lot of the same data sets as investors, and they actually do, I think, uh, you know, no, like I said, I'm not casting shade at the ad tech industry, but they do make a business out of targeting individuals where that's the last thing an investor cares about. Um, and there's been you know, data um, that we've come across where they'll sell to ad tech but not to a hedge fund. And, you know, we're sort of, you know, we take such care um, and, and we do not care at all. And we monitor every way the data gets used. So, um, you know, I just think it's a little bit ironic um, from, from, from that sense. Maybe uh, uh, the investment management space needs a better lobbying industry. Um, but, you know, you know, there's a lot of good legal minds um, making sure that, you know, you know, nothing exploits, you know, any types of PII, you know, violations or MNPI and... Um, and, you know, I think we do a good job of it. I'm sure, I'm sure you do. Um, Dan, from, from your perspective, when you're, regulations aside perhaps, but when you're looking at a data set and evaluating it, what, do, what are you looking for? What are the good things and the bad things that you see in data before you make a purchase decision? Sure. Uh, before I answer that question, I just want to say, I, I think no matter how good of a lobbying industry we, uh, we hire, no one's going to shed a tear for us. So one way or another, uh, we're going to need to be really um, solid on data hygiene. And um, sort of to move on to your actual question, as far as what we look for when we evaluate a new data set, I hope I don't insult anybody by providing a really simplistic answer. And I don't think I'm giving away any state secrets when I say we look for data sets that correlate to KPIs that tend to move stock prices. I mean, it's, it's like it's not rocket science. Uh, and ideally, as I mentioned before, um, we want to find a data set where we understand where it's coming from upstream so that we can understand the funda fundamental link between the data and what we're trying to track so that if that changes, we can normalize uh, and, and adjust. Um, the most valuable data sets check both of those boxes independently. 
but we wouldn't turn our noses up at a data set which uh, perhaps is imperfect on either of those two criteria as long as it has some level of independence and some level of correlation relative to our existing data ensemble. Because again, I think everything is moving towards ensembles. And what we care about is, is there marginal value? Can, can a data set which is perhaps useless to most people on its own make our existing ensemble just a fraction uh, better and uh, more predictive and more robust? Um, on the other side of the coin, there's lots of things that we've learned to look out for that are red flags for data sets perhaps not being uh, so useful. And I'll just uh, throw out a few of them just because they happen so often. Um, so first, unclear where the data is coming from upstream. You can hide a lot of uh, nasty stuff when you're not telling potential customers where the data is coming from. Um, signs of cherry picking. So let's say I get uh, you know, uh, a bunch of back tests where uh, a certain number of companies are selected and certain back tests are shown. And there's, I know there's several other companies that have the same KPIs which should be trackable through the same data set, but they're missing. Oftentimes, it's because actually the data is not that good and they just chose the six or seven that sort of look the best. A um, uh, huge red flag is when back tests change. You have to evaluate data sets over time and see whether predictions hold across multiple quarters. And you, you better save all the back tests that you're sent because a large percentage of the time you look back and, uh-oh, something changed. And it's, you, know, you, you can see the, uh, uh, the reason why some data vendors would choose to do that uh, it, when, when something breaks. Um, black box normalizations and projection math methods. Uh, are, are a big red flag. Um, hopefully it's clear what, what that means. And then finally, um, correlations which look really good before they're seasonalized. In consumer land, everything's seasonal, right? So show me an R squared that looks fant fantastic. Hey, great, because you know, Q4 is always high. Uh, that, that isn't really useful if it breaks down on a seasonal level.